rolling along through the pretty flat countryside of the Netherlands. We're on our way to Rotterdam, continuing our in-depth look at this beautiful country and amazing city, enjoying the comforts of the Dutch rail system, one of the best you'll ever find. It does not take very long to get from one city to the next by train, so we are soon arriving at Rotterdam Central Station. We've already shown you quite a few segments about this marvelous city of Rotterdam, which you can find in our collection covering the waterfront, a boat ride, the market hall, the outdoor markets, the cube houses, and the main shopping streets. In this episode, we're starting out at the train station, which is where you would probably be arriving when you come to Rotterdam. Just tap your chip card on the gate to get through. The train stations are like a small city with shops and restaurants, and you'll even hear some live music if somebody is playing one of the public pianos. The Dutch trains are really the best way to get around in this country. You don't need to drive because the trains go practically everywhere, including all of the main cities that you would want to visit. Bravo, thank you. <laughs> Naturally, you'll find a Starbucks along with some pretty good food, including French and Italian. There's an excellent tourist information counter here where you can get a lot of good advice about the main sites that you want to see in your visit. And so you provide information and hotel bookings as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, Restaurants uh, exhibition, what's going on, you know. So it is all free what is here. Yeah. And you got also a tourist app I can give you if you like. Yeah. You can download on your mobile phone. Okay. What are some of the main highlights for a visitor to Rotterdam? Uh, main highlights at the moment is the market hall. It's definitely the market hall. Uh, Erasmus Bridge. Cube houses. And the head of South. They call it Kop van Zuid. So architects like Renzo Piano, Rem Koas, Norman Foster. Uh -huh. And the pedestrian lanes? Yeah, pedestrian lane, the line uh, is the first uh, shopping street of Europe. It's very nice, still around there. And the uh, Hoogstraat, also pedestrian zone. Yeah. Uh -huh. The Hoogstraat has that lower level, it's interesting. Two, yeah, two it's levels. called the uh, Beurs Traverse. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's quite new, maybe 15 years, one five. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and the library. And the central station where you're now. Yeah, central station. And the train service too between cities uh, is very quick. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, to Amsterdam maybe four times an hour at least. Yeah. Uh -huh. Faster train into City Direct is 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yeah. Wow. And Schiphol Airport only 26 minutes, the fast one. So Rotterdam has been um, continuing to, to grow. It's getting more uh, popular every year, more tourists coming to Rotterdam. Only in the past was always Amsterdam only but now it's Rotterdam getting more popular. Anyway, I hope you will enjoy your time here Rotterdam. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Central Station is the hub of transportation in Rotterdam with many different train lines running through it. Intercity, local, trams, metro, light rail, and international. It's a busy place with over 110,000 passengers every day. The tram station out front is quite active with eight different tram lines running through it. You'll quickly reach anywhere in town from the central station. When you get off the tram, tap your transit card on the machine, that way you're checked out. There are different kinds of tickets you can purchase. If you're just taking one ride, you can buy the two-hour ticket. Good for anywhere in the system with returns in a two-hour period. Or you can buy the all-day ticket or if you're staying in the country for any time period, you'll want to purchase the OV chip card, and that's good on trams and metros, buses, and the intercity trains, very convenient. And the cost is quite reasonable for the amount of rides that you can take. At the end of your visit to the Netherlands, you can get a refund on any unused portion. Standing in a busy traffic circle in the center of town with the Hilton Hotel behind me, makes a very good place to stay. It's a beautiful five-star modern hotel and it's right in downtown and only 10 minutes walk from the train station so it's really convenient. 
and within a few blocks you've got the main pedestrian shopping walls and the waterfront is only about a 10 to 15 minute walk away. There's a tram stop right in front of the hotel. The road behind the Hilton leads over to the main pedestrian street, the Leinbahn, just one block away, shown in the red circle. Grand Hotel Central across the street is a less expensive option, a comfortable three-star hotel with the same excellent location. Back out in front of the Hilton at the traffic circle fountain, it's called the Hofplein, and it's a busy spot with the trams going around it and lots of bicycles, especially at the morning rush hour. With several main streets crisscrossing here, people are heading off in all directions. On your visit, perhaps consider renting a bicycle. You can find them available at the train station and other places around town. And there are so many bicycle lanes, it's very safe. Just take the normal precautions. You're in a country where more people ride their bicycle to work than drive a car. Or just hop on a tram. Always a good way to get around town. We're going to take a ride down one of the main streets now, the Cold Single. Just to give you a quick idea of what the tram experience is like, it's a comfortable ride. After all, you're on steel tracks, so it's much smoother than a bus. This video was shot just over a year ago, and now this street has been transformed, looking much different than what we're seeing here. There is a wide pedestrian promenade, there's lanes for bicycles, and they've reduced the amount of automobile traffic to really enhance it as a main boulevard with shops, cafes, and a pedestrian atmosphere. Rotterdam is constantly trying to make things better for the residents and for the visitors. Getting off at City Hall now, it's a good place to stop and let me tell you a little bit more about Rotterdam and its attractions. There are very modern buildings here and they are well planned with apartments in the downtown area and some parks and you've got the idyllic waterfront with the boat traffic and the apartments around it and the Maritime Museum. As well as different walking routes that you can pick up on from the tourist information office. Yeah, rush hour, morning rush hour. It's about um, 8 o'clock right now. So people are heading to work. Everybody is well trained and highly educated. Um, it's a motivated workforce. It's a real diversified economy. This is a busy city and the downtown is quite compact. It's about a kilometer and a half from one end to the other of the central downtown and there's a lot to see here. There's museums, a variety of restaurants, you've got the waterfront, you've got the great architecture, this modern, modern architecture and it's got a lot of charm. There's sidewalk cafes everywhere. The pavement restaurants are extremely popular. And finding that this country is really a spectacular place to visit. You might not think of the Netherlands beyond Amsterdam in your travel plans, but you really should. The Netherlands is fairly small. You could be staying at a nearby town such as Delft or The Hague or Utrecht and come over by train. It takes just about 15 minutes to arrive from Delft, for example, so that makes it an easy day trip. Or on the other hand, stay in Rotterdam for a couple of nights. That will give you time to poke around in the little streets where you've got some boutiques, art galleries, and unique little craft shops. Handmade items for sale, all sorts of interesting things in the little side lane. There's a boat ride in the harbor you'd like to take. And there's museums to see. There's a culture history museum. There's an excellent art museum. And that's where we are heading soon in the program. Show you a couple of fine museums. To get there, we're taking a lovely route along a canal with a park on both sides and more trams. This Vester Single Canal is just one kilometer long, which makes it quite easy to walk the full length of it. And you would enjoy it because of the parks along the banks of the canal. You've got some ducks quacking by. And also it's an outdoor sculpture garden with fountains and benches and a wide promenade that makes for very easy and pleasant walking. 
It's called the Vester Single Sculpture Route and features 17 different statues by major sculptors, including Rodin. There is a tram route running parallel to the canal, but it makes a nice walk. On our return at the end of this program, we're going to show you what the tram ride looks like after we finish with our visits to the museums, which are coming up in a few minutes. If you're a college student on a group tour and traveling by train, you might even walk all the way here from the train station. It's just about 800 meters away, and let's hope they're heading for a hotel that's nearby. There are several nice hotels along the Vester Singel. Maybe they'll get lucky and check into the Bilderberg Park, one of the nicer hotels in town. It's been around for 90 years and it's been thoroughly modernized. And this street and canal actually mark the western boundary of the busy part of downtown, with side streets leading from it back into the pedestrian zone, as we've shown you in our other Rotterdam movies. While walking along one block over, I noticed this nice little neighborhood park and happened upon a friendly local lady for a conversation. Could you tell me about Rotterdam? We're proud people, but we're also people, uh, we rather work than play. Work first, then play. Uh -huh. Most of the time we're very proud of our city. And I see you have a lot of pedestrian malls. It's very pedestrian friendly. Yes, that was one of the first cities who had that. That's a bonus, and I think for the shops and the malls as well. And now they're still um, wanting more shops, more shops, more malls. Mm. And everybody can see and no more. Market. There's already so how many ma empty spaces. How many clothing stores do we need? That's right. Yeah. Of course, there's always a need for affordable housing, right? And that's the part they keep on forgetting. They break them down, but they don't rebuild them. No. So a lot of people are living above their means. Well, this is a beautiful street. This is typical of, of many of your streets, isn't it? With the trees and the outdoor cafes, the pedestrian. Yeah, yeah. We, but that wasn't always the case. Oh? No, not, not too long ago. We had only one square. That's oh. the one that looks onto the city hall. Sure. That was the only one that had terraces. That's not that long ago. And so now Maybe it's, 10, 15 years? Yeah, it doesn't And now problem. every self-respecting pub or restaurant needs to have a terrace, even if it's only two chairs. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to walk your dog in the park? In our little uh, parks, yep. Uh -huh. Here uh -huh. there's always something new. Something new, a new building. <laughs> <laughs> What's your dog's name? This is Twitter. Twitter? Twitter is a good modern dog. Huh? <laughs> yeah, by name, yeah. Okay, we're going home for coffee. Have fun. Okay. Enjoy our city. Your travels will always be more interesting when you strike up a conversation with a friendly local. Back along Vester Singel, we come upon that big statue by Picasso, which is the gateway to the museum quarter. The New Institute is one of the museums in this neighborhood, featuring architecture and digital design. Mostly, it's a series of special exhibits inside the museum, and they do have a very nice cafe that you can go into without paying admission. Across the street is the Museum Boyemans von Bernigen, which is one of the major art museums in the Netherlands, an amazing collection that spans from the Renaissance and earlier right up through modern design. Take a good look here, however, because the museum is now closed for renovation until the year 2025. So we're giving you a good close look at some of the masterpieces in the video. And you can also find some of these pieces scattered around the city on temporary loan to other museums. They have a large collection of traditional Dutch landscapes. You'll see that ubiquitous windmill here and there and portraits by some of the famous Dutch and Flemish artists such as Franz Hals and Rembrandt and Rubens, along with the Italian Renaissance and Baroque periods. Sometimes art can be very funny, especially when it looks like somebody is stuck down below, poking his head through a hole in the floor. A large Van Eyck and a whole series of paintings by favorite native son, Vincent van Gogh with some early work and later portraits. And he loved colorful vases loaded with bouquets of flowers. Pizarro is among the major impressionists here, along with sculpture by Degas, 
Post-Impressionism by Gauguin and Cezanne. Edvard Munch of Norway's here, along with several Picassos, a full expression of his twisted personal style, bringing us right up into the modern world. Other major modern artists here include Mondrian, Paul Klee, and Kandinsky, the inventor of abstract art. Or how about Andy Warhol and James Rosenquist? There are also quite a few paintings by Dutch artists that you may not be familiar with. In addition to the paintings and sculpture, there is a nice collection of furniture and decorative arts, jewelry, fabrics, ceramics, teapots, various objects created in aesthetically pleasing ways. During the reconstruction project, the existing buildings will be renovated and large new buildings will be created to hold the collection which is now numbering 150,000 objects. They'll be spending about 225 million euro in this extensive long-term project. Meanwhile, you can see the exhibit collections on their excellent website, but don't try to visit the museum now because it's already closed. And as mentioned, a lot of the exhibits will be distributed throughout other museums in the city. It's all going to be exciting when it opens in the year 2025. Meanwhile, there are some gardens nearby you can enjoy. You could walk to the next museum. It's one kilometer away, or maybe just hop on a tram and go. The service is frequent and it'll take you right there. We'll show you another tram ride in a few minutes at the end of the program. The museum we are heading for next is all about people and culture history called the World Museum in English, or in Dutch. The name is Wereldmuseum. Wereldmuseum. This ethnographic collection features objects from Africa, Asia, New Guinea, Oceania, and Latin America, along with changing special exhibits, with sculpture, ritual objects, religious icons, clothing, jewelry, all sorts of cultural objects of art. We were fortunate that a museum curator took some time to tell us about one of her favorite objects in the collection. Uh, you see a bodhisattva in the middle. At the bottom you see two dragons. Then above the bodhisattva is a little pagoda and it's carried by two dragons and also a, a mythical creature. An exhibit of Tibetan Buddhist art was so richly endowed, you felt like you had been transported up to the Himalayas, into a temple perhaps in Lhasa that no longer exists. But thanks to the magic of museums, we can be transported to distant lands. It's wonderful you can visit a city like Rotterdam and experience not only the Dutch culture and society, but step through museum portals to distant worlds. Stepping out of our time machine and back into modern life, let's hop on a tram and ride along that same western single canal that we walked down earlier to get to the museums. There are nine different tram lines operating in Rotterdam, making this a very convenient way to get around, and they are thoroughly modernized. Although in their beginnings, they were founded in 1878 as horse-drawn trams. In 1904, the first electric trams began service, and gradually the horse wagons were phased out. By 1906, there was already five electric tram lines operating, and then four more lines began in the next four years. The last horse cars stopped running by 1925. The maximum extent of Rotterdam's tramway network was 25 lines, which was reached in 1930. Throughout the main cities of Europe, there's been a similar history of trams developing from horse to electric and then declining and in recent years, a resurgence in popularity of the system. Currently, 40 different Dutch cities have operating tram systems, but only two have metros, Rotterdam and Amsterdam. Coming up on a popular shopping street, the Oude Binnenweg, it's one of the only streets that are still surviving intact from World War II. It was not damaged in that devastating bombing run. It's a pedestrian street famous for its many pubs and shops. 
Santa Claus statue stands on the right. As we wrap up our visit to Rotterdam, we can summarize with some statistics. The city population is 640,000, making it second largest after Amsterdam. But if you include the greater metropolitan area extending to The Hague, population totals 2.5 million. Rotterdam has got 38 skyscrapers and 352 high-rises, with many more skyscrapers coming up soon. At the end of our visit, we return to where we began, at Central Station. Hop on a train and continue our journey of exploring the Netherlands. We've got more movies about Rotterdam and many more travel videos about the Netherlands. Look for them in our collection. We upload a new movie every week, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.